So let's get started on placement of our roses. Now I'm going to undercoat them with white so that um, they are bright. Yellows are notoriously not opaque, but this is yellow ochre and it is opaque. So I will undercoat some with that or mix it with the yellows that I'm going to use for the roses. Now I'm going to, I want them to be different values of color or different types of yellow, some brighter than others. And I want the main one to be right here. And they will overlap each other. So this is just kind of an indication of where I want that one. And then I'm going to have one over here. And it's going to be a little bit lower. And it's going to be facing that way. So I'm not going to make it perfectly round. And then this one will be over here. It's going to be a little bit lower on the plane than this one. Give it some interest. So I'm just undercoating with that white. And I'll decide if I want this one facing this way. This one it can be facing that way or up that way. So yeah, let's do it this up this way. So that may, I make it a little more oblong than round. And just fill in there with the wicker white. So I've got to let this white dry before I go in with the next color. I could decide down here if I want a rose bud to be like next to these and maybe I'll just go into some yellow ochre and just pretend that's where I'm going to put my rose bud. Not pretend, just kind of decide and then yeah, then I'll have a stem coming out, a bit of a stem. Okay, I'm going to get my blow dryer, quick dry these and then we're going to paint our roses. So we're going to uh, base paint the very back one with the yellow ochre. It's going to be the darkest one that will set it to the back. And I'm just going over it kind of in the shape of the petals that I'm going to be creating here. So if it looks like I'm doing it in a certain direction or a certain way, that is it. That way the stroke work will match. So basically that one is undercoated. And I'm going to undercoat this one and I'm going to mix a color with uh, the yellow ochre to make it a, just a different tint. And I'm going to go into really, I could do, uh, let me see, this is lemon custard. It is a folk art and I have sunflower. Yeah, maybe I'll go with a sunflower. It's a very light, mild yellow, but it'll bring up that yellow ochre a touch. So let's go ahead with that. Mix the yellow ochre with the sunflower. The sunflower, did I just, was, is a regular folk art color. And um, the yellow ochre I used was a multi-surface. I use them interchangeably. Oh, this was right. This is, remember, I wanted this one to be looking this direction. So I'm going to paint my strokes kind of in there. And you see, I'm getting this different colors of, or striations of color, and that is perfectly fine. And you see how it has a different tone than the other one. And I can do the same with this one and then just use two different yellows as I paint the strokes. So let's see how well the sunflower co covers without the yellow ochre. I haven't really tested different colors. This one looks like it's fairly opaque too. So this flower is going to be pointing down this way. If I want the center, like the bowl, it's going to have a little depth of color right here. I could put that in there like that. And there we have our roses base painted. Now you can look 
and see if you want to maybe add a leaf here coming between them or leave it where it's just the boots or what have you. So add or take away as you see fit. I'm going to leave it, I think. I had thought of maybe putting a leaf out here. It kind of sets the hydrangeas back a little further, but I'm just gonna make this easy and leave it like it is. So just know that you can switch it up as you see fit. So let's let these um, roses dry, the underpainting, and we'll come back and do our stroke roses. And if you want to practice stroke roses, I have two other videos, or well, maybe a few. Um, I have one on painting pink roses. I have one on painting yellow roses. So I will link those in the description box below and you can check those out to practice your roses there too. So let's let this dry. Maybe I'm gonna paint this one a little bit. And then we'll come back and paint our roses. So we're gonna start on this rose back here. And I'll try to do this without getting my hand in your way. And I'm going to use, with the yellow ochre, a daffodil yellow. And here's one, this one's about empty, so I have another one ready to go. And this is a nice bright yellow. I may change my mind and do that back one in a little less bright of a yellow. But with it being undercoated with the yellow ochre and daffodil is not very opaque, it may um, darken it anyway. So let's just give it a whirl and we'll check it out. I can always lighten it or go over it if I don't like it. So I'm gonna double load my brush. This is the number 12 flat with the yellow ochre and the daffodil yellow. I'm working it in the paint, into the brush. So you load each corner and work it into the brush. You want a lot of paint, but you don't want it gloppy. So I'm gonna do the back of the bowl first. And the way I do that is I just decide where I want the back of the bowl to start. And I just, you can do it straight or you can do it roughly. So we got that first petal on there. And then here, this we're going to finish off the bowl by you start, you wiggle, and you bring it down to a point. That is a wiggly comma stroke. And then I'll do the same over here. Let me make sure my hand's not in your way. And so that is the back of the bowl. And then we will continue with the next portion. And I'm not sure I'm liking this daffodil with the yellow ochre, but we'll go ahead and proceed. And you notice how I just did a little wiggle. And this is basically an upside down U stroke. I got too much of the yellow ochre there. Now you don't have to go for perfection. That can work just fine and be like an overlapped petal. And I can do several things. I could fill in the center and then make this be a wide open one, or I could go for another layer of color in there. And to lighten up my yellow a little bit, I, this is ivory white. It has a hint of yellow in it. So it's not like wicker white in that it's pure white. It is Uh, like I said, a hint of yellow, so it makes it work great with the yellow. And you see how it lightened up that edge? So it really stands out against that color behind. So while that center is drying, let's go out and let's do the arms. That's what I call the arms. It's just a wiggly comma stroke and the same on this side going backwards is hard for me so I'm just this is going to be a very imperfect rose 
no two roses will come out exactly alike. So I'm just using the daffodil and the yellow ochre right now. There's one set of arms. Now a lot of times when I'm doing roses, I do the bottom petals before I do the second set of arms. But you see how that's going to be overlapped by these? And so that little one can go there and that will be fine. But I'm not going to worry about doing these ones. Well, I will this one because it shows a bit. But this one over here I won't because this one's going to overlap it anyways. And it just it gums up the paint when you have too many layers on top of each other. Now, we'll come in and finish that bowl. I can create a U-stroke to make it a tiny little bud center. Or I could come and connect this one. And that just be like a back portion only and not a completed bud. So I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to add a bit of the ivory with my daffodil to give it a little more spark of color. And I'm grabbing the tail ends, you see, of that secondary bowl. And I'm going to pull down. Oh, my, my brush is in the way, sorry. I'm going to tilt it, pull down, come across, twist my brush, and let it come to a point there. You could go just all the way across if you wish. But this is just to add variations to your roses. I do these little tricky strokes. Let me get my brush at an angle. And I come down and come across. So it looks like there's two layers. Now it's a little bit messier than it normally would be because I'm trying to angle my brush than, rather than keep it up and down so my hand isn't in your way. But it works. Works just fine. So we're going to finish off that back bowl. And how I do that is I, I'm straight down again. Maybe if I come up a little bit and then, no. So I'm grabbing the bowl, tails of that bowl, and I'm going to bring it down like that. And here I'm going to bring it down and like that. Now my brush is getting kind of gummed up. You see my lines are not staying as narrow as I would like. It is still working. This is going to be a beautiful rose. But I am going to clean my brush, rinse it out. It doesn't have to be completely rinsed out. You see there's still a touch of yellow in it, but it gets the gumminess out where I'm losing my chisel edge. And I will reload. Looks like I need to get some more yellow ochre on my palette. Now if you find these too tricky, or difficult and you want to just do a boho easy little rose, uh, check out my video and I will link it below of boho roses. And those would look just as pretty here. Okay, so we did that, finished that bowl. Now we have these right here that I'm going to finish off. So Here's what I call my tricky stroke. This really comes in handy for creating a little different effect. So I'm going to Put my chisel edge right here where t these two overlap and I'm, I'm straight up and down. I'm just dragging, lay my flat brush flat, drag, 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 and then lift. And that creates that final stroke. So are on the bowl there. I shouldn't say final stroke because I got a couple more strokes going. And then you just fill in with some chisel strokes as you see fit. Like there's a little spot there that needs to be fixed. You could also um, do like little ones there and all of that. If this is not opaque enough, which I can see through this one, I will just come in and add a little bit there. But this will overlap that here and here. So I'm not too, too fretting on it. I just want to make sure that part was opaque. Okay, so there is your first stroke rose. You notice I've turned my palette. That's because this rose is what I'm going to work on next. And I'm going to load. I have school bus yellow. And it's a plaid folk art color, which is very similar to moon yellow in the plaid folk art multi-surface. And this is lemon custard, I do believe. So I'm, I'm working with sunflower yellow and yellow custard. 
Now you can just as easily mix a different yellow like I did with the ivory and the daffodil, or you can mix ivory with the sunflower and that will give you the two different, but I just picked up a bottle I had. And you can change these out as I've stated before. You can make them pink, lavender, whatever you want. So I'm gonna start with the back bowl again and I'm just going to pull an upside down U stroke basically. Upside down U. Reload. And I'm gonna go along the inside. I'll add a little ivory white just to give it a spark. And you can see how not opaque these colors are. And that's why you have that nice under painting. You can see the blue through up there. So if I wanted to make that more opaque, I could wait, let this coat dry, and then come back and go over that again. And eh, I'm not gonna worry about it this time around. So I'm gonna do the second part. Uh, I'm gonna do the arms. I'm gonna leave this bowl wide open. I'm trying to see if I want that one larger. I just went back over it. This a little bit wider. And then I'm gonna do the arm stroke on one side. Call it the armchair arms. And then I'll do this one over here. And then I can come and do this bottom petal here. You see how it comes over this rose? And I will do that again on this section. So we have those bottom petals done. And now we can do the second arm, chair arm, and a second one here. Now for the center, I'm going to paint it in the school bus yellow. School bus yellow, get it kind of filled in there. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to finish that bowl. Rinse my brush a little bit, getting a little gloppy with the paint. Reload my brush. I want it to stand out, so add a touch of the ivory white. And I'm going to grab the tail end of the, the inside back bowl. I've got a little water on my ferrule. I don't want that to drip down. And I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to come along here, and I'm going to finish it. You notice I did different than I did on that one. The other one I went down. This one I just gave it a little loop-de-doop. Whoops, loaded the wrong side. And if you want this to be straight, just do that. Straighter. So I'm going to grab the tail end of this one. And this one I will do where it splits down. Grab the tail, pull down, and cross over that one. So I'm going to make some inside of the arm stroke. See, there's that armchair arm, and I'm going to bring this, bring it down. These are just wiggly comma strokes. And right here, that one got a little thick with paint. Let me go over that. Add a little white ivory. Okay, we could do a tricky stroke here. I don't know why I call it my tricky stroke. It just people find it tricky to do, but we will do it. And I'm going to decide. I think I want to grab it right here. Usually I grab between two petals, but I'm not going to do that. Now, I have my brush right side up. Press and end. And 
And basically, that's it. We had a few chisel strokes where we need to fill in. Add a touch of white if you need to. And there your second rose is completed. So there we have our two roses. You see how they stand out against each other because they're a little bit different tones. So before I move on to this one, I'm going to do this rosebud down here. And that's a pretty simple thing to do. I think I will use the sunflower and the daffodil. Sunflower, sunflower, no not sunflower, I'm sorry, that is school bus and the daffodil. Sorry if I confuse you. School bus and the daffodil. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make an upside down U stroke. And I'm not getting enough contrast there, so I'm gonna add yellow ochre to my brush. And we'll get some, we'll do a little bit like this, and then this, and then we'll come in with, I'm really messing that, we'll come in with um, the calyx and the stem and that will make it look more of a rosebud. Okay. And if you want to, you can just add a yellow petal, like a rose petal has fallen down. Just to walk that yellow around. So let us work on this rose. Now that one was gonna be pointed that way, upward. So I'm gonna tilt my canvas so that I have a good angle for me to work. And I need to decide what color I want that rose. Um, I'm thinking maybe I will just go with Oh heavens, let me look. I think I'm just gonna go with the daffodil and the ivory white. And the ivory white. And this will make a nice bright rose. And we want it to be that direction. So you just work your paint in there. Oh, almost stroked in the wrong side. And then the second part of the bowl. And we'll keep on trucking. And our arms. And I think I'm going to have a smaller center. So I'm going to bring in a teeny tiny center. This one I'm going to finish and make it a real bud. That's the one I didn't do. This one I did the half bud. This one I'm going to do a closed bud. So it's going to have a smaller center. Not completely closed, but you get the indication there. So I'm going to over here to bring the armchair arm, daffodil, ivory, white, and I will. This one is going to have some bottom petals showing. So I'm going to do the bottom petals, which is just an upside down scallop stroke, really. Oops. And did you see what I did? I have been having the ivory white on the outside and the yellow on the inside, and I reversed it there. So let me wipe out my brush and redo that one. I think I need a clean puddle of ivory white. Is that what this is? Yes. Clean puddle. Ivory white and get some of that daffodil. Mix it over here. And I'll 
come back and reverse that. It all works. So we'll do a secondary arm here. There's going to be another little petal here. You see it's not completely covering that green. I can let that dry or I can just let it show through. When the sun is hitting them, sometimes you can see through the petals. So let us do this secondary arm and this secondary arm. And let's finish up the bowl. So here is the second tail ends of the bowl. And I've got my hands straight up and down. And I grab the tail, press the brush, and I can do the finish to the side. So it looks like it's two, or I could have just come around and made it like the first section. I could have just come around and met the ends, but I like adding variations. So here, I'm gonna do the same thing, come down and overlap. And that looks like it's two petals overlapping each other. And then the outer bowl. Outer bowl, we'll just do something very similar. And then we can do secondary arms. Oops, I did it again. Got the wrong direction. I wiped my brush out. I didn't wash it, just wiped it because I want to keep that yellow as, I mean, the white as clean as possible. And then we'll do a secondary arm here. So it looks like this is a mini layered rose. Lots of petals. So then you can just start fitting in some extra strokes. Little slices here and there. Now this back petal is not white enough and opaque enough, so I'm going to bring in a touch more white. And it's got the yellow. The yellow is brushing on there too. And then the same along this outer petal. That white needed a little extra oomph to my mind. And there you have your third rose. Like I said, that needs to be a little more opaque. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over it and help it. And then if you wanna blend it in, you just some little chisel strokes. So there we have our three yellow roses with our hydrangeas. Now I do think I want maybe a leaf right down here. These ones got covered. That happens. And I have to put the calyx on this one anyways. So I also, I think, I want another petal. And maybe one falling here. Okay, let me get my greens out and we'll add one more leaf or two. And I think we can call this done. Let's go ahead. Let's do this, finish off this little rose bud here. Now I have Thicket and Classic Green. You can use the Sap Green. I just grabbed my Thicket. And I am going to use the chisel edge of my brush and I'm just gonna make a stem. And then I will bring up the brush on the chisel edge and I'm just gonna do 
couple of slider leaves. So it's cradling that rosebud. And I can do a small one just right there. With the corner of the brush, we can just add a few little thorns if we like. And usually there's a little button there. And you can use a liner brush, but there's a little things that hang down. So there, your little rosebud is done. And then right between these roses, I'm thinking maybe a couple of scallop leaves. So we can do These will be slightly lighter because the thicket is a little lighter than the sap green, but that's fine. Whoops, I didn't want to over go over that rose petal. So, you know what, I'll just do it. I should have put these in earlier. And then, call it good. Just add a touch of green in there so it kind of sets it in. And there we have our rain boots with hydrangeas and yellow roses. Don't forget to sign your painting. And a lot of times on the acrylics, I like to use a gold Sharpie. My gold and silvers have run out, but just a Sharpie, sign it, and you are good to go. Look at everything over and see if there's anything you want to add. Maybe I will go ahead and add a few navy blue centers to kind of, I don't know, bring that one a little bit forward. So we'll see what we've got going here. Gives it a definition. Okay, one more and I'm good. So we're all done. Here's our rainbow boots, hydrangeas, and yellow roses. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out my other videos. I have more hydrangea painting videos. I have a purple one and a pink. Um, the one I used a filbert brush so you know that you can switch up your brushes. I like sticking with a main type of brush. I really like flat brushes. There's so much you can do that you don't need a lot of different types of brushes. So that's mainly what I paint with and have for a very, very long time. So. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.